Hello everybody and welcome to a tutorial series for programming for finance. In this series we're going to be talking about how we can leverage programming to help us in the field of finance. So a lot of people hear programming with finance and they immediately think of high frequency trading. Well, programming with finance, while it, it can help us with high frequency trading, it can help us all the way down from you know high frequency trading to long term investing. So when people think of high frequency trading, the reason why they think of that is because the machine can calculate and make positions and execute trades faster than a human even can possibly do it. Okay, But actually with long term investing, we can use programming uh, there as well because in the research process, uh, a good example of this would be one of the series we did on this channel not too long ago using machine learning going over the fundamental aspects of companies, things like price to book ratio and stuff like this, going over those numbers and going over them over the past, you know, say, decade and training a classifier with machine learning to classify a company as either likely to continue producing good numbers or not. Now, to do this by hand would probably take someone to go through the entire S&P 500 and to go, like, say, month by month on all the fundamental data and do all the linear algebra required. Uh, that would probably take them about 10 years. So by the time they even figured out what's a good company to invest in, it's too late. So we use machines for this. Also, machines just come with less bias. Humans love patterns. You know, uh, it's arguable that one of the reasons why we've evolved so well is our extreme ability to recognize patterns. But this is actually kind of one of the flaws of us because we're, we just see patterns in everything even when patterns aren't there. So anyways, with, with programming and finance, one of the biggest things that we can do is, is test our ideas and or train our ideas or find new ones and do research, okay? And also like risk analysis on any strategy we might, we might try to employ. So with programming, there's obviously a massive barrier to entry. And then with finance, there's a massive barrier to entry. And using programming with finance, that's another barrier to entry. There's all new... Uh, uh, principles and, and modules because we're going to be using the Python programming language. So there's a whole bun bunch of barriers to entry here and then just getting data for finance, right? Uh, if you want something better than let's say one day prices, well you got to find a source and you usually have to pay for it, right? So all these barriers to entry make it really difficult for somebody to just to get into the field. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use Python. Python is a pretty pretty noob friendly programming language as far as noob friendly programming languages go uh, we'll be using python and we're also going to be using quantopian so quantopian is a web-based application where we can go and there's a built-in python uh, editor there so basically the text editor where we write python code and we can go there write our python code and it comes with a all of the finance modules that we would want now there might be a few that it doesn't have as you as you go down the road, but luckily after learning on Quantopian will make it ex extremely simple because, uh, for example, even if you're not familiar with Python, what I'm about to say will probably confuse you. So in order to do Python for finance, you'll need to get Python, and you probably have to you can choose 64-bit, and you can because you might want more than two gigs of RAM. But you'll be better off if you choose 32-bit so you can download all the modules easily, like NumPy for numbers and all this stuff. And then you've got Matplotlib. Then we're going to need to get Zipline. And unfortunately, Zipline's only good for 32-bit Windows, but it's also a pain to install. And you need a bunch of other stuff. And you're going to have to get, for sure, PyTZ, uh, import PyTZ. And you're going to need to understand how to convert date stamps and all this. And you're going to definitely need Pandas. Okay, so there's just a ton of stuff that you're going to need. Well, we're going to use Quantopian because Quantopian is going to, first of all, already have that stuff for us. But also, it's going to do some stuff in the back end for us that we, so we don't have to worry about it. So one of the things that they're going to do is for back testing, they have this nice user interface. And I won't talk too much about it because I'll just show it in a moment. Uh, so it just makes sense if this is your first time into programming or finance uh, that we go ahead and use Quantopian. Now, Quantopian is, there's really nothing, I mean, their, their website's probably proprietary, uh, but the code that runs, really runs Quantopian is Python, which is open source and free, Zipline, again, open source, free, 
uh, and a bunch of other Python modules that, again, are open source and free. So just because you learn on Quantopian doesn't mean at any point you can't walk away from Quantopian. So if you have some sort of crazy algorithm that you, you're just too scared to have on Quantopian, you can leave Quantopian. Okay, so anyway, uh, and, and also Quantopian, there's no referral here. They're not paying me to do this. I was just trying to think of the easiest way to get people into Python and finance, and this has got to be the easiest way. So uh, anyway, so head to Quantopian.com. This is their website. If you don't already have an account, you'll need to go ahead and sign up and create an account. Once you have done that, go ahead and click on Login here. And I've already got an account, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Nobody look at me as I type in my password. And uh, when you log in, this is what you'll be seeing. So head over to Algorithms. We're just going to kind of zoom through this. Feel free uh, to poke around the website in a moment. I just want to show you what Quantopian's doing here for us, so, uh, the real crux of Quantopian. Uh, so you'll head over here, click on uh, Clone sam Sample Algorithms. So this will give us some, some basic algorithms that Quantopian's kind of pre-written for us. And we want to look at this sample algorithm for a basic strategy. So just click on that. And up pops over here on the left is Python code. On the right, this will be like your returns and stuff. And then down here is like the log. This is like your console from, from Python if you're familiar. If you're not familiar, that's totally okay. Uh, we'll, we'll take this pretty slow as we go through uh, Python and finance and all the code that we write. So even if you're not familiar with either Python specifically or even programming, uh, hopefully it'll be slow enough to either you can still follow along and what I'll end up doing is I'll end up annotating links to for more information on programming topics uh, there will be tutorials so if you're not familiar with something just ask a question or check out the annotations so over here is Python code and the way this works is you've got these they look a lot like functions but they're not these are methods if you don't know what that means don't worry about it but basically you define the method here and uh, you'll you'll really never need to define them. They are, they're going to come predefined every time. And then under initialize, you write code, you know, block of code that runs once. And then under handle data, this is the block of code that runs, you know, on every iteration. Again, if you're not totally following, that's absolutely fine. It will end up building our own algorithm from scratch so you can uh, understand. So if you don't understand what's happening here, totally fine. So uh, anyway, what we can do is we can either build the algorithm here and it pops up over here, or you can just run a full back test and you can run it against daily data or minute data. And Quantopian has that data for you already. You don't have to worry about pulling it and pre-processing it and uh, worrying about dates and all this madness and pandas. You won't even have to touch it really. So awesome. Uh, and so what it's going to do is we're going to take we're going to be dealing with the security of AAPL, which is for Apple, uh, which makes expensive phones. And then we have handled data and under handled data, you can see the algorithm that we're going to be running. So I'm trying to get my zoom just right uh, so yeah, everybody can see it nicely. And under here, we're, we're generating the value for the average price, which is a moving average of five days or five windows. And we're using daily data. Uh, and then we, we get the price and then we come down to the true crux of the algorithm, which is right here. And basically it's just asking if the current price is greater than the average price and we have the cash for to pay for the current price. So if we have more cash, so if the cash is greater than current price, uh, then we buy the shares else or L if again, if you're not familiar with if and L if statements, when we hit them, I'll annotate to specific tutorials, but they pretty much make logical sense, uh, or at least grammatical sense. If you, you know, else if current price is less than the average price, what do we want to do? So that's kind of what's nice about Python. It just makes sense if you read it. And then uh, here's some record, and, and we'll talk about that too. But anyways, here's the full uh, crux of Quantopian. You hit run back test, and a bunch of code that you never wrote is running right now, and you can see the results of your trading strategy pop up here. It'll take a moment for it to start, but here it goes. And so here you can see this blue line here. This is our algorithm. How is our algorithm doing? And then this red line is the benchmark. And the benchmark is the SPY. The SPY is the Spider S&P 500 ETF. So this basically follows the S&P 500. Um, and then here, custom data. This, this is uh, just stock price for now, but I'll, we'll be talking about how you can put whatever you want here. And you got a bunch of other information here, but then here you can see basically the performance. You know the, the you know the bottom line of our strategy is we we did good. Now 
we be we beat the market because we were trading Apple. Okay, uh, so don't worry that that strategy is not uh, not uh, some sort of golden strategy by any means. But anyway, we we beat the market, and then with Quantopian, not only do we have this graph, but we have this graph custom data. We've got weekly return graph. We've got transactions, but that's not all. We come over here. We have a ton of stuff. All this stuff here on the left hand side is incredible. This would take us a really long time to code it. Quantopian's already done it. You got transaction details. This is all the moves that we've made. Log output if you, you know, are storing things to log. And then you've got risk metrics, returns, treasury returns, benchmark. You've got alpha, beta, sharp. If you don't know what any of these are, that's okay. We'll talk about them as we get to them. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you've got all this stuff and also drawdown. That's nice that you would want to have in your research uh, and you'd have to code this and, and it would take a very long time. But no, what Quantopian is doing for us and really what Zipline is the module, what, what Quantopian and Zipline is doing for us is basically taking out all the necessary coding to uh, the, the statistics of a strategy and it allows us to just create the strategy and then get all the information we want out of it. So it's extremely useful. Now, um, that's it for now. In the next video, we'll actually we'll talk about creating our own uh, algorithm and you know what goes into that. And so we'll kind of break down that other that page that we we're just looking at. We can go back to uh, the sample algorithm here. We'll go back into basically what you know what goes into the creation of an algorithm here. And so we'll create our own algorithm. We'll just do a simple one. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. But uh, that's Quantopian. If you have questions or comments up to this point, uh, feel free to ask. If anything is confusing or you don't know what's happening here, I have a ton of uh, tutorials that you can uh, follow along with. So let me head over to pythonprogramming.net. And so this is Python Programming. That's my tutorials website. You can always come to start learning. And if there's a concept you don't understand, you can always come to the search bar and type in what whatever it is you're looking for. So let's say it's if statements. So you could type in if uh, if statement, and there you go. There's a tutorial on that. If you need to just run through the basics, these are the basics, um, and that's that. Also, if you're interested in that in like the machine learning stuff, that's here. Uh, data analysis, machine learning, and then here is that fundamental investing tutorial series I was talking about. So, anyways, that's that. Uh, like I said, I'll try to annotate to anything. Uh, that I think a newcomer wouldn't necessarily know right out of the gate, but I'm going to miss a lot. There's a lot of information that will be thrown at you if you're not familiar with Python or even programming at all. So anyways, uh, that's that. Questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until the next video. If you have annotations turned on, you'll be able to click on the videos at the end of every tutorial to move on to the next part. Also, if you have annotations on, I will be annotating various things that you can click for references. So if I reference kind of a new programming topic, I'll annotate to a tutorial on it. Also, maybe some finance principles if you're not familiar. I'll have annotations to those as well. So if you need a little bit more information, you'll be able to click on the annotations to learn more. So if you don't have annotations turned on, you can turn them on by going to the gear at the bottom right of the YouTube video. Go ahead and click on that. That's for your settings. And there's an annotations option. Just turn that on. A lot of people use and abuse annotations for like advertising and stuff like that. So uh, if you turn them on, just you might want to turn them off at the end. Uh, but I promise I won't be abusing them for <laughs> advertising or anything like that. So that's all.